Thank you, Mr. Chair, Ranking Member uh, Jimenez. Uh, Mr. Michelini, um, I've read reports and I've seen firsthand on trips to the border uh, that drug cartels are using drones to facilitate movement of drugs and uh, illegal migrants over the southwest border. I know you alluded to this in your testimony. Can you describe, and if it was happened during my absence, I apologize, what the CBP has seen, and then what capabilities do you have to counter transnational criminal and drug trafficking organizations on the border? So what we have, uh, so as far as counter, uh, small UAS and what we have seen, uh, I think you might have been out, but we had a five near misses just with our own aircraft and a small UAS in the last year and a half. We've had a 6,500 illegally crossed the border since August of 21 that we've seen. Again, this is really important, you know, just to go what Mr. Gould is saying. It's just what you see, right, where you have your capabilities. And then 1,700 illegal crossings since uh, January. Um, the uh, illegal legal crossings are just one category of it. The other category is just parking drones so you so the cartels would create a sense of domain awareness of where they want to go, whether that's how you cross the, by a port of entry or how you cross between ports of entry, and then how law enforcement on the UN, U.S. side is reacting to how you're crossing. So it's a great tool for the cartels. And, and you know, again, they, they don't have First or uh, Fourth Amendment. They don't have any concerns, right? They're just, they're just operating uh, at will. So uh, we have developed from DHS lead a, a con op on how we execute counter UAS operations on the southwest border. Presently, we have two covered locations, and we will intend to expand it all within, all within a judicial, you know, concise process to ensure we're doing this uh, within, with, with, within our authorities. Um, it's just a, it is a process, and we are moving forward, and I think we've had some great successes, and we've had a lot to learn, and, and it is, uh, like every other person sitting here, it is an uphill battle right now, um, but, but you know, in a moment like this, we, I think there's some clarity on where we need to go. So given the increased usage of unmanned aerial uh, drones from both the uh, CBP side, U.S. side, and from the cartels, and that we have supply chain issues, is there a supply chain problem that you're experiencing in relationship to getting the equipment that you need? I'm sorry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be aware if there's a supply chain problem on that. But I can, I can look into that for you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Vinegard, the authority that Congress uh, granted uh, to DHS to counter UAS in certain circumstances sunsets in October of 2022. Can you speak, uh, if, if you already have, again, my apologies, uh, about DHS's plan to seek an extension of that authority? Thank you. In expiration in DHS's authority to engage uh, in protective measures against credible threats to the safety and security of DHS missions would result in significant risk to all of our homeland security. As such, DHS, in partnership with other members of the administration, will in the very near future be providing to Congress a legislative proposal to seek reauthorization to uh, address the uh, elevating and escalating threat landscape. Thank you. I look forward to seeing that document. Thank you to our witnesses, and thank you, uh, Chair. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to ask a question.